Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 35. 35. What do you got for me? Uh, Nabby's original number. That's right. And then Vesa Toscola. Also a very good one. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so this week we'll be talking about the uh, the, the poor all-star game. Uh, Vlasic is back in action, which is awesome. And we'll also be taking a look at the month in review. Uh, we'll take a look at some trades around the league that's happened so far. And uh, this week up ahead. And... I guess bad trades mm. that we've seen online. Yeah. Well, I saw one in particular, but we'll get to that yeah. in, in just a bit here. So, are you ready to start the show? Ready. I don't know, man. I think I've had it with this dump. We got no food. We got no jobs. Our bobbles heads keep falling off. Who broke? <laughs> We actually haven't had a, a breakage in, in quite a while, so um, maybe that wasn't the most accurate opening. Success. Yeah. I think uh, I, I think the producer had epoxied some of these down so that they don't fall over, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Regardless, uh, yes, again, uh, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, All-Star Game, that was the uh, the last game that we've seen for this week, and a whole lot of nothing after that. Right. Uh, the All-Star Game was uh, disappointing, to say the least. Uh, John Gibson. Oh, yeah. uh, not a lot of fans in San Jose of John Gibson. Uh, Before the All Star Game, kind of still the truth there, but um, yeah, wow, did he blow it? Uh, he made two saves. <laughs> on, was it nine, nine shots. shots? Seven goals against on nine shots. That's uh, it's pretty amazing. I don't I don't often say that I could do better than professional players, but I feel like I almost <laughs> could have done better. I might have squeezed out one more save than okay. he did. Probably not, but. <laughs> Uh, it's wow. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, when when the San Jose crowd is chanting "We want Flurry," um, that should tell you how bad you've been playing. So yeah. uh, I don't know why we can't run into him when he's having such a bad night uh, against the Sharks. Maybe he's playing like Carlson. Maybe like, maybe he's hurt. Going great. back to what we said a couple weeks ago. Great. So it could be. And he was just coasting. Yeah. Um, you did you did there. say that he uh, he gets. Uh, injured quite often he does um you actually i, I remember i called it saying that he was going to be injured and then that same day he got injured <laughs> he left the game against the sharks right but in then the middle of the game yeah and then after that you had said you know he's gonna he he's probably just gonna get injured again and uh, he I didn't know. miss i think he came back right away yeah to the next game but he didn't play very well he gave up five goals i think mm -hmm. um so um yeah we'll see i anaheim is not looking too good um down the stretch, and right. I don't think they're going to be. I think they're going to be the odd man out uh, for that wild card spot. Yeah. It's going to be tough, but they're just not looking good. Yeah, so. but in, in terms of the uh, All Star game, Carlson did play. Um, he, again, we I figured he was going to go half speed, and that seemed to be the case. So um, now some folks were saying, "Well, he shouldn't have played in that game because he doesn't look like he's going to be able to dress for the next game." Um, they were thinking maybe he would have uh, agitated something else uh, during that game, the All Star game. I don't think that's the case. I think he was just, uh, he, he had a reason that he wanted to be there, and Aaron's actually got a little more on why. Yeah, he d he's an ambassador for the NHL, and not just, you know, not just for the Sharks. He's playing, he has he uh, plays for the Sharks, obviously. He's representing the Sharks, but he also has a huge following still in Ottawa. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of Ottawa fans that are still following everything Carlson does and would watch the game to see how he plays. There's also a huge following in Sweden, mm -hmm. in his home country. So much so that... Our show gets a lot of Swedish fans uh, <laughs> watching our show. Hello, Sweden. Hello. Um, <laughs> hello. Is it hello? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, but but we get a lot of <laughs> Swedish people watching because of Carlson's news. So yeah. or any news on Carlson. So um, so it it he kind of had this pressure on him to play, and not not so much pressure where you need to play regardless if you're hurt. Mm -hmm. I, if he was really hurt. Um, like if this was playoffs, I think you'd be playing. Right. And I think he's mentioned this, or the coaches mentioned it. So um, he's he's a little banged up and needs a little bit of rest. And I we still don't know he's going to be a game time decision for tomorrow night's game. Right. Uh, against the Coyotes. So let's say he. So he played in the All Star game. Obviously, if he plays tomorrow, that's going to give him six days off, six days of rest, which is good. Yeah. But if he skips tomorrow and goes on the road trip. Um, that'll give him nine days off mm -hmm. after the All-Star game. And granted, the All-Star game, he wasn't playing hard. He wasn't yeah. he wasn't exerting himself much. Yeah. So um, it's not like he re-injured or re-aggravated an injury. Right. So uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if he's off tomorrow. It's against Phoenix or not Phoenix. Arizona, Arizona now. They <laughs> changed their name. Um, it's against Arizona. And, 
yeah, the Sharks need him, but do they really need him? Right now in the standings, they're looking pretty good. And gives, we'll get to that, too. Yeah, it gives yeah. another guy an opportunity. Tim Heed's going to be playing because we saw yeah. him in the lineup So er, at practice. Mm-hmm. So um, it's not necessarily a terrible thing to have him rest one more game to get that extra three yeah. days of rest. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, so I was at the practice today, and yeah, Eric wasn't there uh, today, mm-hmm. so uh, Tim Heed was actually on the second line power play, and he was out there um, doing his thing. Uh, having said that, one guy that wasn't there, or he showed up after practice had ended and was kind of doing really light skating was Marco Bart Vlasic. That was like a week or two ago. Um, last week, I believe it was that I had said he's kind of returned to practice, and he's looking like he's more engaged. Um, I saw him today, and he was fully partaking in all of the practices. He was skating hard up and down. He was taking two-on-two rushes. He was taking two-on-one rushes. He was he was all over the place. So he looks like he's back. He says 100%. I'm sure it's more like 85 and 100% ready to go, but I'm not you know 100% healthy. So I feel like he's got maybe a little bit more to go to get just a little bit healthier, but he's ready to play. And it sounds like he's going to play against Arizona. He looked really good at practice today. Yeah, and there was a quote from Pete DeBoer. This is the big final push for him. I don't think he's had the season he wanted to have so far. He's dealt with some injuries and some other things. He's a proud guy and is a huge part of this. He needs to find another level for us over the last 30 games. He knows that, and I think he will. Mm -hmm. So one of the big takeaways there is he's had some injuries and some things. Yeah. Which we, I don't, I, I, I kind of speculated, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And I had said this, I think, I don't know if I said it on the show or if I just said it in socials, but um, I, I just felt that there was something other than the physical side that was ailing him, right? Um, we, we've seen him get knocked out of, of playing games and, and, and not participate in practices, and that was on the physical side. He had something going on with his left hand, wrist, elbow, something that moves that's on the left hand side, and he wasn't using a stick specifically with that hand. Um, but we're seeing him now and he looks a lot better and he's able to play Mm -hmm. great. I'm hoping that whatever it was that was before that injury that was making him play so poorly is just on the mental side and he's able to clear that up. And this is what DeBoer saying. He's got a 30 more games or so where he's able to make himself play better and that's what they need. So he's back physically. He needs to be back mentally, and if he can do that, we're going to see the market of Vlasic that we all know and love, <laughs> and uh, hopefully that brings Justin Braun's game up as well, and that mm-hmm. pairing can really shine in the defensive zone, which means, oh my, <laughs> this team. <laughs> uh, if you have that pairing playing really good defensively, mm-hmm. and you've got Eric Carlson and Brendan Dillon, obviously they've been play- playing pretty well defensively as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you've got the juggernaut that Burns. is Burnsy and Shimmick has been yeah. has been playing really well alongside him. That's going to shore up the the whole defensive core, and if they can button that down and play really well in front of Jones, Jones's numbers are going to go up too. Right, and this is the last stretch going into the playoffs. So, right. um, granted, it's a little bit more of a push. We'll we'll see kind of like two halves of this half of the season. Right. Um, we're also going to see the tread deadline coming up, so who knows what's going to happen, mm-hmm. uh, what Doug will bring in, or what will get shipped out. Right. Um, but I I think this could finally be the Sharks gelling and, and the team that everyone was expecting to see out, mm-hmm. out the gates um, is really going to start playing well now. So yeah. um, jumping into looking back at the month in review of yeah. January, uh, if you look at the numbers... I mean, everyone Everyone was so high and low. Uh, Seven-game win streak, followed by a three-game losing streak. Right. And then coming back to an amazing game against the Capitals. Super emotional game. Yeah. yeah. Lots of highs and lows in just that game alone. But, yeah, so like you had said, there's, there's a seven-game winning streak that was followed up by a three-game losing streak. And, of course, it's kind of a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately like league, right? With, right, with the fan base at least. So... Um, you know, when you take a look, and that's why we, we do the show the way we do. Mm-hmm. We don't want to look at just an individual game and get too high on it or too low on it. We take a look at the the broader picture, and the broader picture in this case for the month of January says... They went 8-3 and three in the month of January, <laughs> getting 16 of a possible 22 points. Phenomenal. It's ridiculous. So if you spread out those three losses in between those games, let's say they win two, lose one, win three, lose one, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel so bad. But because they lost three in a row, it makes everyone just, like, throw their hands up be like, what's wrong with this team? Yeah. Trade everybody, fire DeBoer. <laughs> and it, it's a little ridiculous. So, again, what you said, we like to take a macro view and right. go, wow, this is take, take a step back and go. They had an amazing month mm-hmm. in January, um, and they've been getting better and better. So we look back 
I guess you could do a possible year in review by month. Mm -hmm. um, they were they had an okay October. Uh, I think they were like six and three or something in October. November was a five hundred, so they right. they did uh, points wise. They were had fifty percent of the points. Yeah, and then um, December they got better. December they had a really good month. I think they had twenty out of thirty points, and then this month they've got sixteen out of twenty two. I mean, look where they are in the overall standings yeah. in the entire league. They are fifth in points, um, and they are third overall in scoring. They have the third most goals yeah. scored in the NHL, which is incredible. Um, this team is incredibly talented. We mm -hmm. see a lot of people asking for trades to get more offense in when I think the offense is fine. I yeah. think it's the defense and, again, the team defense that needs to get shored up. Right. Um, so I think the Sharks are in a very good position, obviously, going in yeah. towards the second half of the season. Yeah, I mean, we take a look at the stats, uh, specifically of individual players, and we see that there are now seven players with 30-plus points. I mean, that's scoring by committee. And I think uh, Curse had tweeted this one out, too, and I said I actually responded to that tweet saying that's the way I'd like to see it, to be honest with you. I'd rather see scoring by committee than by one player or one line, in the case of Edmonton, Colorado, right? They've got one line. You shut that line down, they're done. Or if McDavid gets injured, or Pedersen for, for Vancouver, he gets injured. I mean, that's that's it. You're done. This way, it, you know, say Hurdle gets knocked out. Does it suck? Yes, absolutely. Are, are we a much worse team without Hurdle? Yes, absolutely. Can we continue scoring? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right? I mean, we've got so many guys that are able to put the puck in the net. In fact, there's... Uh, seven 30 plus point guys but there's also five guys that may be on pace for getting 30 goals this year oh definitely on pace and i think doable yeah uh pavelski's got 27 so he's only three goals away uh kane's at 21 right mm -hmm. now um coacher and meyer, meyer and coacher and meyer at 21 19 i thought or 19 and then uh who's the last one i forget now <laughs> i can't remember so pavelski kane oh that's it pavelski kane meyer coacher there's one more. Oh, you guys dear. will let us know in the comments yeah. down below who it is right. who we're forgetting. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, uh, just basically all around, there's lots and lots of scoring going on up and down the lineup. So there's uh, there's really nothing to complain about, and I don't know why we need to add more scoring to it. So, yeah. um, you know, all these calls for trades for um, for Simmons, and we can talk a little bit more about that later on, but it's I think that added scoring punch is almost unwarranted, right? And, and there's the thing of, of fans getting upset, and this... We see this happen. To, we we talked about this in the live. We see this happen two times a year: trade deadline and July first when free agency signing mm -hmm. comes. Everybody wants the shiny object that is the best free agent out there, yeah. so that on paper the Sharks can look the best and looks like they're doing something. Right. And you, what's funny in the salary cap era, you see a lot of teams doing just that. Look at the LA Kings. They signed. Uh, uh, Kovalchuk right. to a three-year deal and it's not looking too good. They signed a lot of their <laughs> players to deals that are now not looking good and look where they are in the standings. Yeah. They can't afford to, to pay and get a better well-rounded team, mm -hmm. so they're not doing so well. Um, the Sharks, that that's just not Doug Wilson's MO. He likes to look at players that are good for the team, for the overall team, right. and going into the future. So he, so he doesn't do a lot of rental players. Now, having said that, he's admitted that he is looking more for rental players this season because this is the window, right. I think, the best opportunity they have. Um, this is definitely the deepest Sharks team there's probably ever been in their history. Um, the depth scoring is insane. Going back to those 30-point getters and th possible 30-goal getters, right? right? Um, we're... We're seeing team. Oh, Hurdle is the other That's one. That's yeah. I was gonna say. I, I was waiting for a break so I could right. jump in and say Hurdle's the other guy. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but you have three scoring lines yeah. that are mismatching, and we've talked about this in previous episodes where. That's where the Sharks are going to do some damage is the mismatching. Yeah. And especially when you get into playoffs and you're playing a seven game series against teams, um, the Sharks are just going to overtake a lot of these teams because not a lot of them have the depth that the Sharks do. Right. Even defensively, they don't have the depth to cover the offense that the Sharks have. Right. And that was something that I had brought up previously as well, is other teams trying to match up with their defensive pairings, not even just with the forward groups, good luck with that, but also having to match up against the defensive pairings that we're throwing out because you've got weapons in Burns and Carlson, and you have to D up on those guys. You can't mm -hmm. just throw whoever you want out there just because they're not a forward group. That defense is going to pick you apart if you don't match up against them. And I think there's not really any teams in the league they are going to have three solid defensive pairings 
that are going to shut everybody down. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So I think we're we're a poison in a really good position uh, moving forward. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm just really looking forward to us doing some damage yeah. the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So looking around the league, uh, there's some trades that happened. One was today. Right. Uh, one was uh, for Derek Broussard, who we had talked about two weeks ago as yeah. a possible trade target. Now he went from Pittsburgh to Florida, and Florida got Bukestad and uh, someone else, which blows my mind. Bukestad now with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I think they both needed. It was kind of a change of scenery sure, type yeah. thing. Uh, Broussard especially because he was not doing right what he what they brought him in to do mm-hmm. in the third line center there. Uh, so the thing is, Florida, uh, according to multiple sources, they're going to deal Broussard again, so he's not going to stay in Florida. Um, so he could still possibly be a trade target for San Jose. Yeah. Um, and the Sharks have traded with Florida in the past, so there is some relationship there. Um, but they're also in the running to get Panarin and or Bobrovsky mm-hmm. in Florida, which would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but that is also two players that the Sharks won't be getting. Right. So um, Broussard is still, I think, in the hunt, but who knows if that'll be a trading piece to go into Columbus if, if they want to go after them. Yeah. Um, but to a different trade was Jake Muzzin from the Kings going to Toronto. Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring that up is that kind of sets the precedent or the, the market of a first-round pick. So L.A. got a first-round pick for Jake Muzzin. And Jake Muzzin is, is a good defensive guy. I'd say he's a top-four defenseman. Sure, yeah. I don't think he's a – he's not a – He's not a Carlson. He's not a Burns. Well, yeah, and you had related him earlier to uh, a Justin Braun, right? right? So we're not even talking really like a, a market board Vlasic, a really you know super solid defensive shutdown guy, but the partner to the super solid defenseman. So uh, I, you know, and this is the guy that just got a first for right. his name, right? right? Which is nuts. Yeah. So I think uh, that's going to set the market. So a uh, Wayne Simmons, um, someone who's even better than Muzzin, mm-hmm. is going to command definitely a first round pick, which the Sharks. Do not have right. So um, unless Pick, the sh- prospect and generally a, a young roster player of some right. sort, yeah. Unless the Sharks somehow work out a three-team trade mm-hmm. where they get a first-round pick and trade that to somebody else, which is obviously a lot harder to do. Yeah. So um, I just don't see the Sharks bringing in a big-name player again um, or a top six forward. Sure. Yeah. I think a bottom six, uh, bottom three forward um, is more realistic. And um, I think somebody that could do that fourth line center. Yeah. Um, Matt Duchesne is is somebody who's still kind of linked with the Sharks yeah. a little bit. Uh, so I, saw something I, I just saw little little grumblings here and there. I'm not even sure where the source was, but um, basically some folks saying that Duchesne was a possibility for San Jose still. Um, I, I mean, he could be, but what I had read was that Melnick, the uh, owner of the Senators, had said he's not paying more than $8 million per year for Duchesne, and that that's not even a starting point for Duchesne. Now, that could mean that Duchesne doesn't want anything to do with Ottawa, so you're going to have to pay me more. But if I were to go to any other team, you, yeah, I'd be okay taking less. Maybe that's what he meant by it's not a starting point, like to play in Ottawa. Uh, but I think a, a player of that caliber can certainly get $8 million on the open market, and, and that's I, we're not going to get that. This, was, this is going back to Carlson when he was on Ottawa. Yeah. He kind of wanted the same thing. He wanted to get paid, and... Melnick, the owner, was like, uh, no, and they stopped contract negotiations, and then all of a sudden got Carlson got traded. So that was kind of out of the blue. Yeah. Carlson kind of knew it was coming because they just stopped talking. But that's kind of how the owner is. Is he, He's kind of cheap in a way. Like <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it. I'm yeah. not trying to be mean. He just he doesn't – he's a little more frugal with his money. So um, he – I have a feeling that players know this. Yeah. Probably why it's not a destination point, right. being in Ottawa. Um, so Duchesne is probably like, yeah, eight's not even a starting point. Like nine, ten, and, and yeah. maybe I'll stick around. And the owner's doing a hard line saying, no, eight's as much as I'm going to go. So Duchesne will probably get traded, I yeah. think. Well, and, and the funny thing is you look at that trade with, with Muzzin, and he gets yeah, you know a first for, for Muzzin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you look at what people are considering is going to need to go to Philadelphia's way to get Simmons. And then you take a look back at what we paid to get Eric Carlson. And people are saying, oh, we paid a lot to get Eric Carlson. Mm, we, we Again, line items, yes. 
But when, again, the centerpiece of that trade is essentially your third line center and Chris Tierney, who I, I miss deeply. Um, <laughs> uh, when he's the centerpiece of the trade and then people say, oh, there's a first that went there, though. And it's like, well, it's it's a late first. It's almost yeah. a second, yeah. you know, considering where we're going to end up in the standings. So when you take a look at that, man, that Eric Carlson deal looks like a, a pretty good deal, like a, really st- a real steal, right? you know, by comparison to what yeah. everyone else is going to have to pay for a high caliber player, let alone one of the best yeah. defensemen. And I, I think it's more of a steal if Carlson stays. Yeah. If he signs an eight-year deal, then definitely that was a steal. If he doesn't stay, then I think it's more of a push. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the Sharks lost. I don't think Ottawa lost or won, so I think it's yeah. more of a push. So it's a great deal, yeah. great potential for the Sharks to give an entire season of Carlson um, where he's integrated in the system. It took him a while. It took him about a month or so to get into mm-hmm. it. But um, now he's in, and now he knows the culture, now he yeah. knows the area, now he knows what San Jose, you know, the whole, every, every, the whole package of San Jose, right, right. of the San Jose Sharks. And um, now instead of cramming that into a trade deadline deal mm-hmm. where he's here for 20 games... Now you have him for an entire season, so it's a lot more time. Yeah. And I think they're supposed to be doing trade negotiations, I believe, this week. Right. Um, or not trade, nego- uh, contract negotiations. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so um, so who knows? Maybe they'll announce something after the trade deadline when they can announce an eight-year deal. Yeah. Um, and that would be fantastic. And if they don't, I have a feeling that's going to drag on and be a huge distraction for the Sharks because not so much that the Sharks are going to be mad but the media is going to blitz him yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Every interview after every game is going to ask, why aren't you signing? Are you going to hit free agency? Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Well, I think you're right. I think if he does sign for, for eight years, uh, man, that looks like a really good deal on our part. A uh, pretty bad deal for Ottawa. But another bad deal, and it's an example of a bad <laughs> trade. Um, here uh, we go. Yeah, here we go. Well, we asked, we asked two weeks ago for yeah. your bad trades that you've seen online and here is a great example of one that paul saw so unfortunately this wasn't a user giving me an example of a bad trade that he had seen this was a user who thought that he had a good trade and no (laughs) it's not a good (laughs) trade so uh i think we were talking about uh you know simmons and i'm saying you know we don't have the assets to give up for simmons we do actually if you want to give up hurdle or meyer or any of those guys good we have the assets it just doesn't make any sense to do that though you're going to go backwards right uh, especially for a guy like Simmons, who you're probably not going to be resigning. I'd rather have Hurdle in the longer term. Anyway, so this person who Aaron has uh, talked me into not saying your name um, out of respect. So <laughs> I don't really have any respect for you, but that's okay. If you really want to know, you could figure it out. Yeah, you could, you could definitely figure it out. No, so, and the reason I say no respect is because this person ended up blocking me and I was being nothing but cordial with him, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so he says, you know, uh, Radil, Sorensen, Dell, um, Gosh, who else? Uh, LeBanc. All these guys should be available. And it says, yeah, and none of those guys are going to get you Wayne Simmons. Not even a combination of three of those will get you Wayne Simmons. And he says, well, then, you know, I would I would uh, throw in the ultimate choker of all time, Joe Thornton. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. <laughs> oh, and a defenseman, which he didn't name any defenseman. He ended up saying, he, his final was, um, let's see, LeBanc, Goodrow, and Jumbo for Wayne Simmons. So three, an entire <laughs> line. And then... Basically, yeah. No, no, no. It's a um, center and two wingers, it, it, right? It's center jum- jumbo. Goodrow is the the fourth line center, and then well, LeBanc is bouncing. And is bouncing. Sure, but he's fourth, and he's bouncing. LeBanc is bouncing between. No, third I and understand. Line. I'm just saying you're you're trading a center, a winger, and a winger. Okay, yeah, yeah, fair. I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, yeah. A line's worth of people for <laughs> one guy. <laughs> for one guy, and you're you're trading. None of those guys are in the top six even on your team, right? So, there's that. Then there's the fact that Thornton was one of them. Why would Philadelphia, who is going to be <laughs> turning away one of their better assets, to hopefully to get for the future, to get something for the future, want to pick up Joe Thornton, a 39-year-old who's nearing the end of his career with two reconstructed knees on the one year left on his contract? And he has a no movement clause. What, what, in what universe? <laughs> is that In the universe where Philadelphia is a playoff contender and the Sharks aren't? Then that makes sense, right? Right, but then you wouldn't be trading Wayne Simmons, right? You'd be trading some prospect to get Joe Thornton, right? I just I don't get it, people. I I just don't get it. So anyway, you know who you are. Um, block me if you'd like. That's fine. And I think I've got the did. backing of everyone else. No, I know. I'm just saying <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I think I've got the back of most people who have a clue. 
So um, anyway, that was just an example. And uh, while in NHL 19, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, trade bar? Yeah, the, the, the trade value bar yeah. may add up to be enough, which in this case, I don't think it does anyway. In real life, that's just it's just not realistic. EA so. is just not realistic because well, yeah, EA is also season what Tampa Bay is in last place. <laughs> yeah, so I, I and I I'll bring it up. I don't care because I I do play the game. So um, I was playing as the GM, and yeah, uh, not only was Tampa Bay in last place, which is ridiculous. Uh, Eric Carlson the next year resigned with my team for like five six million <laughs> a year for eight years. I'm like, okay, this is EA, come on, step your game up. But yeah. anyway, um, so that's what I mean by the video game world being vastly different from from the real world like just because Joe Thornton has good trade value maybe and in terms of the game it doesn't mean he has good trade value to a specific team in real life Philadelphia wouldn't want Thornton a team like Tampa Bay maybe they would want Thornton to shore up like their their bottom line or something right that would make sense but Philadelphia is not going to want that so that's that's kind of what I'm looking at in terms of these these trade ideas that are just bad trade ideas and that's just an example of one right so there's there's a difference between impossible or possible and plausible yes we look more of the plausible route mm -hmm. because essentially what what we're trying to say is muzzin was traded for a first rounder that sets the precedent that most teams are going to want a first rounder when they're selling their assets mm -hmm. and the sharks don't have that selling a, a selling team is going to want future assets either a roster player that's young and good that will fit in their team now and in the next five years. So Timo Meyer, mm -hmm. Hurdle, uh, maybe LeBanc. LeBanc's value is just not the same as those two others. Yeah. Um, they're also going to want picks because that's kind of the backup plan if that player doesn't work out. Um, now, the Sharks don't really have a lot left in prospects to give up. Uh, they don't have very many draft picks that are high value to give up. Right. And um, I just other teams do that's the problem yeah. so th the problem is not that the sharks can't do it it's that they can't compete with the other teams that are willing to give up more other teams to get can that do player it. yeah other teams can do it better essentially yeah yeah and philadelphia and any other team that's selling is going to do what's best for their team they're not going to give the sharks a favor so um a lot of these trades just it's it's great and in, in Online. Well, the, yeah, the idea is, hey, Simmons would look great in teal. Yeah, there, a lot of guys would look great in teal, but it's a matter of being able to get them in teal, right? right. And and whether and or not price. you think we have the assets, which we don't, but whether or not you think we have the assets, I guarantee you other teams have better assets, more assets, right? Instead of us giving them a second, another team can give them a first. And instead of one of our prospects, who our prospect pool is maybe a little bit lighter than other ones, they can give a higher, uh, a, a better prospect, right? I mean, the other, the other thing to look at is the chemistry that you're trading away three guys that are right. well-liked in the room. That's true. And you're bringing in a new guy, and if he doesn't perform right away, the weight on his shoulders from the room hating on him for... Yeah. Not for him. It's not his fault for, for <laughs> trading those guys away, but if they're not producing yeah. and it's not working out, then it just magnifies and gets worse and worse and worse. So the chemistry thing is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, trading guys away just to bring in one superstar, I don't. I just don't see it. Yeah. I don't see another trade like how we got Joe Thornton in the first place. Mm -hmm. Three guys with no, I mean, that was just, people look at that trade and they go, oh, Doug Wilson can do that again. Well, no, it takes another stupid GM to say <laughs> yes to that and an owner right. to say yes to that. So um, I don't see that happening, a three for one player, straight player for trade. You yeah, know? yeah. So. No, I, I don't see it. And, and again, Eric Carlson, we, you know, that's kind of what made the Eric Carlson deal so nuts was that we gave up, you know, Tierney and a DeMello. Again, a third line center, a fringe defenseman. He was really like a seventh, right? right? Six, seven defenseman um, as kind of the backbone of that trade. And then, yes, picks, but the picks are late. You, you know, know, going back to that Carlson trade, it's interesting to see because Vegas was very interested mm -hmm. and Tampa Bay was very interested. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what the Sharks did what their offer was better. Like, I wonder what their offer was yeah. for Carlson. So it must have been worse than the Sharks offer. So that'd be interesting. I'd, be, I'd love to find out the behind the scenes yeah. stuff on what, what that would have been. I don't yeah. know if we'll ever find that out, but that would um, be really interesting. I think that'd be hear. cool. Yeah. Cool to know. All right. In any case, okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm done uh, bashing you. <laughs> so you know who you are. Um, no, so anyway, uh, looking ahead now. We're done looking back at, at your horrible trade. And we're going to look ahead now. Uh, the, the Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm a bitter person if you haven't figured that out Jeez. yet. Um, Mike Johnson 
you know too. Uh, so anyway, week coming up, we've got four games. No back-to-backers, though, so that's a good one. That's great. Yeah. It's finally... <laughs> Finally, a four-game stretch, and there's no back-to-backs. So there, there is a game tomorrow on Saturday. Before we get to that, I just want to remind you guys that there is a Barracuda game before the Sharks game, so the ice is going to suck yeah. for the Sharks. But uh, the Barracuda game, they, I believe it's uh, Kentucky Thoroughblades night, and they have uh, Dan Boyle, Scott Hannon, Evgeny Debakov, and Mark Smith. Smitty. Uh, yeah, so all those guys are going to be there. They'll be signing. I uh, Get there early if you want anything uh, signed by these guys. It's an because game, obviously, because the Sharks is at night. But. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, the line's going to be out the door. So uh, if you want anything signed by these guys, definitely get there really early. Anyway, yeah. back to Sharks. So Saturday, uh, later on that day, they will be playing against the... Arizona. I was waiting for you to say Coyotes. Coyotes. <laughs> Phoenix is so ingrained in my head. Right. Arizona Coyotes. Uh, this game... Uh, Carlson is kind of up in the air. I'm going to guess, I'm going to say he's not going to play because mm-hmm. he didn't practice today. But right. um, Arizona is going to be a tough team, tough game because they're always a tough team to play against. Uh, kind of a grinded out team, which the Sharks don't tend to do well against unless they can score early on them mm-hmm. um, and get the lead. So um, they're also only a few points out of a playoff spot and they're going to be fighting tooth and nail to get in there. So. Um, a lot of these games are going to be tougher and tougher and tougher when we get towards the end of the season because right. they're going to need points. So um, it's going to be a tough, grinded-out game, um, but it's not going to be as cold as it is going to be on their road trip. Why don't Why don't we give the weather report uh, in a row after we're done announcing all the sure. games? Okay, sure. cool. Because I think you make a good point, and and he's this is awesome. This is great, great insights by Aaron here. So thanks. Uh, the 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 Tuesday game then, right? Tuesday against they're in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Okay, so what do you think about that game? That's going to be Winnipeg. Winnipeg and Calgary are the two best teams I think in the Western Conference. I think Nashville's probably third. And, I mean, the Sharks are up there, too, obviously. Yeah. Duh. But um, <laughs> uh, they're going to be playing these guys back-to-back, right? Or not back-to-back, but they play Winnipeg and then they play Calgary. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what the Sharks can do. I think um, Winnipeg plays tough. Buffalo, I think, is still out. So I don't think he's going to be playing. Mm. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, he usually, you know, gives the Sharks a real hard time. I think in the last game he put somebody on their butt. Gives everybody a really hard time and puts someone on their butt every game he yeah. plays. Yeah. But um, without Big Buff back there, I think uh, they're a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a good team. They're they're similar to the Sharks where they have a lot of depth scoring, very dangerous on the power play. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got to stay out of the box. And uh, the Sharks need to really work on their road game. Their road game is not very good. Uh, they're incredible at home, but on the road they're just... 500 team basically yeah. um what do you what do you see in or what do you want to see in winnipeg well of course i want to see a win but i mean you know you're right winnipeg is a very dangerous team they're one of the top teams in the west so this is going to be a very good test um we may not see them in the you know the first round or anything but i mean we could see them as part of the conference final so yeah. um this is it's not necessarily a preview because we don't want to tout it up and then lose and then be like oh we're gonna lose in the finals so, you know, because you know how the fan base right. is. Anyway, um, yeah, I know it's going to be a tough game, uh, even without uh, Big Buff back there. Uh, they've got, you know, good scoring punch, and we got to be ready for it. And, again, this is one of those teams that – or an opportunity for our defense to show how much they can clamp it down. Mm-hmm. So you're going to go up against a Winnipeg team that's got high-powered offense. we got to, sh- you know, shut it down on the defensive side, create that turnover, and let the defense create the offense. And that's what they've been talking about this whole time, especially Logan has brought that up as well. Uh, like you said, back to back, but it's not really back to back. It's consecutive. Calgary then on Thursday, unless you had something else you wanted to. I think no, no, no. I can okay. say it after. So Calgary, um, right after the Winnipeg game, a little bit of travel. Mm-hmm. Get there. How you feel about that one? Calgary's gonna be tough. Uh, Sam Bennett. Yeah. Obviously, there's gonna be something going on with Sam Bennett. <laughs> uh, maybe they start Aaron Tell in that game again. Okay. Uh, Jones is starting. DeBoer already said Jones is gonna start in Arizona, uh, against Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could see I could see Jones playing Winnipeg too, right. and then maybe giving him a break in Calgary, or maybe giving him a break against Edmonton the next game. I don't really know. No. We'll see how that goes, and we'll see if Jones gets pulled in any of the games, because um, you never know. So, <laughs> uh, so um, the Calgary game is going to be rough and tumble. I think uh, we'll probably see a lot of penalties, maybe some fights. Yeah, uh, might be some old school hockey. So, um, Calgary another place. Tough place to play against. Yeah. Um, 
in in the saddle dome. I, I don't know if that's called the saddle. I think dome it's anywhere. still called the saddle dome. Yeah, I honestly don't care though because it's not Sharks hockey. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I am expecting to see uh, in the Calgary and though is not just um, some rough and tumble. I'm expecting to see Evander Kane drop the gloves. I'm expecting five penalty minutes out of Evander Kane <laughs> that time around. So, He's uh, over 100 now. Yeah, hey, uh, not bad. That's good. <laughs> I guess it's good. 21 goals, over 100 penalty minutes, so he did eclipse that Owen Nolan um, bar, if right. you will. Yeah. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, a five from him. I believe it was him that was uh, post-game had said, it's funny how guys get a little bit taller when I'm oh, not on the ice. Right. Yeah. See, so I think he's going to make a run at, uh, at Bennett there, and I think you're going to see them uh, – Probably in the first period, just get it out of the way right away, and then mm-hmm. go from there. Yeah. So that's, hey, win, lose, or draw. That's definitely one thing I'm looking forward to is some redemption. So there. going back to what you said about a test, right? Yeah. It's going to be a test. What I like to do in these games is think, okay, the sharks, sharks may not have won, right? But mm-hmm. they played a, a good game. Um, think about in a seven game series, who do you think would win in a seven game series? Mm-hmm. And obviously not. Based on how they played that one game, they're going to play every single game in a seven-game series like right. that. But um, if the Sharks the Sharks look good and just couldn't score, couldn't get, you know, they get a lot of chances but just couldn't bury them, yeah. think about in the playoffs, how's that going to change? Mm-hmm. And think about if they go to overtime. Overtime in the playoffs is a lot different than overtime oh, yeah. in the regular season. Regular season, it's three-on-three. Three. And in playoffs, playoffs it's yeah. it's full five-on-five. Five. Yeah. You're playing a whole other period until somebody scores. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Anyway, I like to just think, again, kind of a macro view. Right. Seven-game series, who you got? At this point, I think the Sharks can beat both Winnipeg and Calgary in a seven-game series. Yeah, I, I mean, think the, just their depth is a little bit, just a little bit better, I, and their I, defense is better. Yeah, I, I, and, and when you put it in that perspective, can they beat them in a seven-game series? I think the Sharks hang with everyone in the league. Yeah. I mean, Tampa Bay is a force to be reckoned with, but again, if you shore up that defensive side... Not just the defense men, I shouldn't say that. The team defense. If the forwards are playing good defense as well, puck's going to turn over, we're going to control it. And when we control the puck when, and we have good possession, we're hard to stop. So, I don't know. I think we can hang with pretty much anybody. But So, going back to Calgary, okay. I think they have a problem on their hands mm-hmm. in their goaltending. Riddick is playing well. Mm-hmm. and Or Riddick, Riddick, I don't know how you say it. <laughs> uh, Mark Smith was their starting goalie starting the year. And... Mike Smith. Mike Smith. Mark, yeah. What did Smitty, I say? Mark Smith. Mark ah, Smith. It's in my head. <laughs> Mike Smith is their starting goalie. Yeah. Beginning of the year, and now Riddick has taken over, but Smith has been playing pretty well, and they've been kind of going back and forth between the two, and they're kind of playing the hot hand. Okay. You can't play the hot hand in the playoffs. You lose confidence. Right. So I think uh, Calgary could be in trouble with uh, goalie controversy. And especially in the last crunch of the yeah. last 30 games or so. Yeah, another team that's in trouble, but not just because of their goaltending, Edmonton. So yep. uh, we we meet up with them on Saturday. Yep, and so. again, one-line team. I think the Sharks can handle them uh, if they don't take them lightly. Yeah. Shut down McDavid if you can keep him to two assists <laughs> and dominate but he'll be in the game. dominating us with those. Well, it was actually two, two goals, goals, but then the other one was the dominate Sharks with one assist. That was my headline. Right, and the, the two goals was one assist. in the first 10 seconds yeah. and then the last five seconds of the game. <laughs> like, come on. Dominated the game. Yeah. He dominated the first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds. Yeah. That's about it. But, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to us shutting down that line and winning that one handily. I, I don't think Edmonton is a threat. In fact, um, I, I can't really even... Beyond McDavid, no name really jumps out as like, oh man, awesome, except for Dreisaitl. But there's no name on that team even that just jumps out at me and says, that's a good player. So I'm really not concerned with Edmonton whatsoever, and especially when you consider that McDavid and Dreisaitl have been paired up. So they didn't have you know center depth on yeah. two lines, and then maybe so-so wingers. They have they have everybody stacked on one line. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the media day that we went to, and we saw them, Oh, man, I felt so bad for them because that was the first... I didn't realize that was the first <laughs> appearance they yeah. had since Chiarelli got fired, mm-hmm. their GM. So they were bombarded by the media, both of them, <laughs> asking them the same questions. You could just read their yeah. body language and just like, oh, this question again. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. you know, And they're just throwing cliches out there yeah. um, just to get, get them off of them. So um that obviously is a big <laughs> thing for yeah. their team I, th- I think they're just they're done for the season yeah so i did see a meme though it said something like you know most teams uh they don't get to send more than you know maximum like three players you know this like the sharks sent three players to the all-star game 
But Edmonton, they got to send their whole team. <laughs> <laughs> I thought good. that was great. Yeah. That's good. So anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm looking for a, a big win in Edmonton, and that's that's what I think is going to happen. Yep. So we'll see. Um, but you guys will will know about that, and please go ahead and comment down uh, in the the comment section down below with any of the thoughts you have on any of those games. We'd love to hear from you guys, and we'll see if any of that stuff comes true. Yep. That's how it is. So uh, before we end here, I just wanted to give one quick shout out. There was a, uh, a guy uh, I ran into at, at Costco, actually, uh, Riley. Riley is a big fan of the Fin Factor. Just want to say, hey, uh, what's up? Big, uh, big thank you for, for stopping me and saying hello. It was great meeting you and shaking your hand. And uh, Aaron's pulling out the hat. So <laughs> I don't know. What are we doing? Uh, just go ahead. Okay. So that's it. Th thank you, Riley, for being a fan. There you go. Now. I was just going to say... You're plugging merch. I'm plugging okay, merch. Okay, all right. <laughs> we have our store. This is the hat that you okay. saw, right? Yes, you were wearing this hat. hat. I was wearing this. Well, not this exact hat. I was wearing, hat. This wearing hat. that hat. That's yeah. the exact hat he was wearing. So he saw it. Uh, so we have hats for sale. Yep. We have... Here's all our shirts that we got. Go ahead. And my favorite. The deep V. The deep V neck. <laughs> oh, I'm covering the microphone. The deep V neck. So anyway... Um, yeah, really, again, soft, awesome material. If you guys are fans of the show and you want to support us, this is the best way to do it. Um, Here's the gray. The gray's there. The teal really pops. I love that one. That's I, my I'm, favorite. I'm taking this one home. I'm buying this one and taking it home because I didn't get one. So, nice. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll wear this around. Very good. Okay. So, yeah, support the show. Thank you. And I think that's all we got. We're good. Week. Yeah. Okay, so we will um, have this a video out for you guys tomorrow morning, which should be, what, Saturday? Yep. I guess. Yeah, it's kind of weird. We're, we're doing our, our Friday show now, but that's probably behind us. The next time around, we're going to be doing Sunday. So if you want to be a part of the live, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to us so that you know when they, that notification is getting sent out when we're going to be doing the live. Click the little ding right around here. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's over there somewhere. The bell. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, make sure you have that notification ring as well. So when we do go live, you know, and you can go and join that. It is so much fun. I really enjoy the live. It is. It's, it's yeah. a ton uh, of fun. I, I really enjoy taking your questions live, and it's uh, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes, you know. But other times, it's you get a quick response to a question that maybe is burning a hole in your brain. Yeah. Having said that, that is the end of episode number thirty-five. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.